Hello everyone and welcome to my new session on Azure Back to School. My name is uh, Uroš Babić, uh, Cybersecurity Manager. I'm currently working in a oil company, uh, but I'm also Microsoft cert Certified Trainer in uh, SEMOS Education. Many thanks for to organizer who has set my uh, two session and of course i'm very proud to to be part of uh, amazing speaker of uh, annual community event as well back to school uh, this year with uh, definitely very very amazing uh, presentation uh, demo and everything uh, the subject of my presentation second uh, presentation uh, is cloud forensic investigation in uh, Microsoft uh, Azure. As you can see of uh, this uh, agenda, I will talking about uh, uh, in introduction about the cloud forensic. What means the cloud forensic? How we define the cloud forensic? And after that, we are talking about the cloud forensic challenge uh, in uh, Microsoft uh, Microsoft Azure, and I definitely will explain all all uh, all about what is the currently actually challenge uh, regarding, uh, for example, uh, investigation regarding troubleshooting, regarding uh, uh, log monitoring. Uh, uh, we are talking about uh, data system recovery. Uh, what is the term, for example, due diligence? And uh, what is actually regulatory compliance? Because uh, that is involved a system organization in following some diligence and ad adhering uh, to requirements uh, for example, start securing critical data that is very important for uh, all company. How we store our critical data, how we protect our critical data before, for example, sent in the cloud and uh, maintain records for audit, uh, uh, notified some third party affected for by sensitive data exposure. That is also very important part. And uh, uh, we can start with cyber kill, kill chain process. And I, I will explain everything about uh, cyber kill, kill chain. Uh, what is the steps uh, that trace the stage of uh, cyber uh, attack in, in the cloud? Uh, and after that, we, we can start uh, finally with uh, starting with the indicator of compromise who is the no bets uh, about the visibility and hunting across the attack chain. And uh, uh, I will explain about advanced person threat tooling uh, and uh, actually what is, uh, what is uh, methodology when we're talking uh, about, uh, when we're talking about uh, 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 cloud forensic investigation. And, uh, uh, I will uh, I give you a lot of examples, for example, uh, what is uh, important steps when we're talking about the cloud forensic investigation in Azure uh, and uh, with the point of view virtual machine acquisition in Azure. And uh, cloud forensic incident response challenges, what is the best practice, for example, uh, how we describe just in time virtual machine access, uh, uh, file integrity monitoring. It is very, very important scope. Uh, uh, and uh, or I will also explain. And we were talking about different tools because this is very, uh, uh, very interesting part, uh, how we deal with the uh, Azure Office 365 incident response forensic tool and uh, in uh, the last part of uh, my presentation, I mentioned uh, about uh, what is security recommendation about 
devices, about identity access management, about activity cloud. Uh, we are talking about SMB, preventing SMB traffic, uh, weak password, uh, because password hygiene is very, very important and uh, how we define the password policy. Uh, and uh, I, I will talking uh, about the password leak techniques and everything, uh, what is uh, the best uh, recommendation and everything. Actually, very, very interesting part and uh, we can start. Okay, I, I previously, uh, uh, um, in, in shortly uh, about, uh, I explained, but uh, uh, okay, that is that is a slide for my uh, introduction, short introduction. I am uh, actually uh, uh, cybersecurity manager in Serbian oil company, but I am also uh, uh, involved in uh, in uh, lot of uh, Azure training uh, as a Microsoft certified trainer. You can see on this slide. I am also uh, responsible for for Linux uh, uh, courses. Uh, EU Council. Uh, program like incident response and uh, uh, computer hacking forensic investigation and uh, that is actually currently my two, my two company and position and uh, actually that is uh, all about about me yes i mentioned in introduction very very important part when when we talking about actually uh uh, what is uh, how we explain the cloud forensic? Uh, you can see uh, the first sentences. Uh, that is a application and uh, a, uh, of digital forensic investigation in the cloud environment and division with the with the network forensic challenge uh, management of public and private networks. Lot of but. Uh, for example, according to uh, NIST methodology, uh, digital forensic is actually application, but that is uh, how we define, how we uh, examination, collection, analysis of data when we preserve of information and maintain of uh, chain of custody uh, for that, for uh, data. And uh, cloud computer actually spread up across a large network and the customers uh, uh, customized principles uh, for example forensic procedure in the cloud uh, uh, differ uh, uh, according the service uh, provide and the deployment model and uh, actually initial phases it's very important part because uh, initial phase of evidence collection vary of uh, different model for example in uh, software as a service model uh, i am a digital forensic uh, investigator and i i will completely for example depend of my cloud service provider uh for collecting for example i don't know application logs for example however in infrastructure as a service that is different because I'm digital investigator and I can acquire the diff, uh, virtual disk for operation system, for example, for my client and initiate forensic uh, examination and uh, analysis process. Uh, actually, uh, in cloud forensic uh, examiner, I, I, I can uh, have uh, some physical access for the digital evidence in the private cloud services because that's provide more control to the customer over data and hardware infrastructure. But that is very difficult to gain physical access uh, to the data in, in a software as a service model over the public cloud and investigation depends on the audit reports and log data, log management actually. But that is provide from cloud service provider that is very important part how we explain that and you can see yes that is a summer challenge but uh, definitely have a lot of other challenge uh, investigation yes involves 
uh, investigation of uh, organized cyber crime, for example, investigation, uh, policy variation, uh, suspicious activity, and cloud ecosystem. But you can use, for example, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting uh, uh, with the point of view functional, operational, uh, I don't know, security issues, for example, in the cloud ecosystem. And log monitoring. You can use different tools for collecting examination, uh, correlation, log entry, like uh, Microsoft Sentinel. I'll, ex I'll explain before in my demo session everything about Sentinel. But security event management system, uh, it's very important part when we're talking about log entry across multiple endpoints, for example, in the cloud ecosystem. And, and I, I, I can assist uh, 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 in audit. I can assist uh, due diligence, uh, regulatory compliance, uh, in other, other many, many efforts when we're talking about uh, log monitoring, uh, I can create a different rule, I can create a different use case uh, and send uh, for critical events and incident uh, notification or create some report. And uh, that is uh, how we, uh, in shortly, describe uh, log monitoring uh, because that is, that is definitely a challenge. But I mentioned troubleshooting many, many times regarding uh, incident uh, management. I, 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 I assist uh, uh, users in troubleshooting uh, by determining uh, of data, for example, and host uh, that is physically and virtually present in the cloud uh, uh, environment. And um, they allow users to find and resolve some error or security issues in the cloud. And that is a challenge because that helps to understand uh, the trend of past some security attack uh, to tackle any incident in the future. That is a point how we understand this, this uh, uh, troubleshooting. And uh, we, we also have different uh, different challenge i mentioned data and system recovery is very very critical part why because i'm cloud forensic and i uh, involve some recovery procedure that can be held forensic some to recover lost accidental situation i don't know corrupted uh, data and what is inaccessible regarding the, it, it, it can be in, in accordance with the CA triad, but we have incident in the cloud. And it also enable some data acquisition uh, on the cloud system uh, and creation forensic copy. We will see uh, during uh, this session how we do deal with that. Uh, of data and can be used by the service provider uh, uh, as backup. And forensic expert can use some copy of the evidence in the court of law in the chain of custody process uh, for cybercrime investigation and etc. And the last is due, due diligence. Due diligence regulatory compliance because cloud forensic also deal with the security aspect of many organization because that is the critical data maintain some necessary necessary records uh, uh, and notified uh, about suspicious activity its report i mentioned before private data has been uh, for example exposed we have uh, some potentially data exfiltration on the cloud location, for example, for the dark web and everything. And that is actually helps to find the section uh, that miss of regulatory compliance and how we fix our issues. In short, how we describe this, that, 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 that part. And uh, I mentioned uh, 
we have, uh, for example, cloud crimes. We have cloud as a subject, cloud as an object, cloud as a tool. Uh, using cloud to perform some cybersecurity attack uh, in other cloud, and when the crime-related evidence is saved and shared in the cloud, lot of lot of different different example. Uh, 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 according to the shake. Uh, 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 stakeholders and uh, and their roles and everything, uh, it is it is very very uh, uh, good to explain. Some uh, I I I uh, where we have the, uh, uh, something to delete in the cloud, uh, recovering over written data uh, with the point of view architecture and identification. Single points and failure is very, very good example, which uh, might have some uh, impact to the evidence acquisition process, for example. Uh, that is also a good, good example, a cloud forensic challenge, uh, because criminals, attackers, can access low cost computer power, for example, can uh, real time investigation via, via intelligence. Uh, process is not possible. Malicious code, uh, virtual machine isolation methods, uh, multiply uh, geolocation and everything. We have we have actually a lot of, lot of example uh, because uh, it's very, very <laughs> uh, easy explanation. The criminals is in the cloud. Uh, cloud con confusion and restoration, lack of transparency, Error in the cloud config portal configuration by some cloud administrator because human factor is the uh, weakest link in, in cybersecurity. We know that. And uh, uh, that is constantly how we educate uh, uh, with the point of view data collection, for example. That is a very, very good uh, example. Okay. And actually, the next steps is uh, how we describe the cyber kill chain because security center threat protection includes some uh, fusion the kill chain analysis uh, automatically correlates alerts uh, in your environment uh, based on cyber kill chain and uh, help to better understand uh, the full story of uh, different attack campaign uh, and uh, when it started, time correlation. Uh, after that, uh, what kind of impact indicator of compromise uh, ahead of your uh, resources? And the security center support kill chain uh, base of Mitre attack framework. And uh, this is very good illustration because explain typical steps. Uh, the trace of stage of cyber at attack. For example, uh, reconnaissance, that is uh, actually observation stage when attacker access your networks and uh, services to detect some possible attack and technique to gain entry. And attacker use different reconnaissance tool, OSINT tool, for example, for that purpose. Instruction, attacker use definitely knowledge to gain uh, some reconnaissance space to get access to part of your network is often involved exploring the flow on security hole. Exploitation phase involve uh, is how we deal with the vulnerability management, insert some malicious code in the system to get more and more access. In privilege escalation, I, I will explain in, with a very good uh, example in the in the next slide, but uh, just definition, how we understand the privilege exploration. Attacker often uh, try to gain, for example, access for compromise system. So they uh, can get access uh, uh, more the critical data and move uh, into uh, into other connected devices. Lateral movement, uh, that is up to moving laterally to connect service and gain access to potential data. 
And after that, in many, many incidents, we have data filtration and some, for example, ransomware attack in order to compromise data and uh, the cryptic data and everything. And uh, the next phase is obfuscation, anti forensic uh, because to successfully pull off, pull off cyber attack, uh, attacker needs to cover entry. And that will uh, very often compromise data and clear audit logs uh, to try to prevent, for example, detection by security team. In many, many situations, I must have knowledge about these techniques, uh, anti-forensic, but it's, uh, if I don't have any knowledge, it, I'm, I'm in a problem as digital forensic investigator. That is a uh, totally different theme and for totally different session, but it is very important mention here in cyber kill chain. After that, we have deny of compromise. Deny because disruption of normal access for users and system to keep an attack from, for example, uh, to be monitoring, uh, track it or block it is very important. Exfiltration, I mentioned, that is the final phase because uh, when an uh, attacker gets some valuable data of the compromise system that is actually act of our reputation and very, very, very uh, uh, important to understand. After that, we have uh, we can start with some indicator of compromise because the hunt hunting cycle uh, start with the hunting of indicator of uh, no bad uh, ranging from smallest unit of indicator of to behavioral indicator that may be defined as an actor. Uh, incident response investigation uh, is more manageable when. Uh, uh, when I can start, for example, with the indicator of compromise trigger, you can see on this slide, of course, and uh, no bad to take some additional finding information. And uh, I can begin with some, uh, I don't know, data reduction te te techniques and uh, to leave the data we are looking and to, one example of data stacking with helps to filter and store forensic artifact by indicator across the enterprise environment. Uh, and for example, some years trigger, we can enter the hunting flow uh, in compromise system for suspicious event or suspicious file. When we have compromise application, we also have suspicious event, but we have suspicious artifacts. And we must define uh, threat hunting tools and methodology for that purpose. Uh, um, computer emergency response team for Microsoft Dart. It's a very good example how we understand the point of uh, in time deep scanning tools, how we deal with uh, proprietary incident response tooling for Windows and Linux uh, machines and uh, forensic triage tools on device sort of, of interest. But uh, the critical part is definitely uh, 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 Microsoft Entra uh, ID or uh, previously uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory uh, with the point of view security con and configuration assessment. And uh, def definitely that is a good introduction in, in the second part because for continuous monitoring, I can use different tools. Sentinel for that is that provides a centralized source of even image logging. I can use machine learning, I can use user behavior, I can use artificial intelligence. And Microsoft Defender for endpoint is very good, good uh, example. 
uh, for example, when we when I have phishing mail and click to the URI or open some malicious attachment, I have exploitation installation and common control or user browse to the website. Never mind. We have a lot of example, but Microsoft Defender for Cloud uh, is very useful how I correlate attacker activity through endpoint activity process with the registry and file events and everything. Uh, and uh, to quickly respond to threats when working the side by side with third party antivirus vendor. The second stage is Defender for Identity. Because in a lot of situations, uh, I must identify attack against of on-premise domain infrastructure and uh, my user is compromised. My server account is a compromise. Attacker attempt a lateral movement and privilege account compromise uh, activity. And uh, when I have problem with my tier zero, for example, uh, is that is not properly configured. Uh, domain compromise is the next steps or attacker access sensitive data, exfiltration data. Uh, I must know how detect attack, attack uh, against from premise domain infrastructure when I'm working, for example, for the dom domain controller and everything. And for detection and common traits, I can use different different uh, tools for threats and analysis or for, for example, authentication requests. Uh, that is uh, examining some authentication requests to um, Azure uh, Active Directory from all operation systems that use some machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence to quickly report many types of threats, such pass the hash, such, for example, golden and silver ticket, skeleton key, uh, and more and more. And finally, I can use Microsoft Defender for cloud uh, with a combination with the Cloud access security blocker when I must protect my sensitive data, for example, before sending the cloud. That is request. I guess I can use uh, <clears throat> software as a service application in the cloud uh, and uh, uh, in on-premise infrastructure. That is request for my customer. I I can create a, a, a key management system because I must protect all sensitive data, what is the sign of my complaints, uh, compliance team and encrypt it uh, before sending the cloud. But the process for encryption and decryption store on premise. And I can use, for example, DLP policy, CASB DLP policy to protect my sensitive data uh, based on my geolocation, uh, malware investigation and etc. But when I support various deployment models, including the log collection, API connectors, and reverse proxy, that is provide actually visibility control. How I control, for example, data travel and sophisticated analysis to detect and combat threat analysis across all Microsoft and third-party cloud services. And that is very, very important. To, to understand for actually uh, uh, continuous monitoring. But I can use uh, different uh, uh, other tools for deep scan, that is including uh, uh, proprietary endpoint scanners such uh, um, ASEP, uh, Live, Fox, enterprise data include many active directory configuration and antivirus logs. And for global telemetry, I can use uh, intelligence security, Microsoft Grab. Uh, amazing uh, tools. And uh, larger sensor network, for example, that is very good. Uh, but for continuous monitoring, I can use Microsoft Defender for Office 365 for uh, spoofing impression and content analysis. Uh, Defender for cloud application. I uh, I can monitor 
uh, application discovery, for example, access management, data loss prevention. Defender for endpoint, uh, how I monitor exploitation, installation, and common and control channel. And defender for identity, I mentioned the consensus process, lateral movement process, domain dominance, and everything that is that is very good uh, example. Uh, in addition, we work actually with internal threat intelligence system like uh, Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center, Advanced Threat Analytics. It's also very, very good to provide details from hands-on experience and everything with customer environment. Uh, and going to with the threat actors, information collected from these uh, experiences and everything that still provide a trail of evidence to help uh, for incident response or uh, security operations center analysis uh, uh, to ensure security of customers. Actually, we have a lot of lot of different uh, example with the point of view tactic uh, execution persistence uh, credential access uh, technique like brute forcing credential dumping uh, uh, in, in the discovery phase we are using the network share enumeration uh, overpass the hash uh, win uh, uh, rem for lateral movement uh, uh, remote monitoring uh, uh, PowerShell and service execution, uh, phishing files for initial uh, success and everything. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely a lot of uh, different uh, techniques, uh, how we understand the uh, uh, process uh, in everything uh, with the point of view uh, cloud, cloud challenge and uh, cloud forensic uh, investigation in uh, in Microsoft, uh, in Microsoft Azure. Okay, we can start. We can start. Uh, uh, actually, we can start with uh, with uh, some uh, uh, explanation about virtual machine acquisition in, in uh, Microsoft Azure uh, because uh, that is. Uh, that is very very important part uh, how we how we understand uh, the in the steps how we create snapshot from operation system dix uh, or suspicious virtual machine i have problem my virtual machine is compromised via our, uh, azure portal uh, how i use uh, uh, azure portal but i will explain all with uh, for example powershell activity how I can copy snapshot uh, for storage account of the different resources group because I create a resource group for production and I create resource group for uh, security because I must investigate problem uh, and delete snapshot from resource group and create backup copy uh, and mount the final snapshot on my forensic workstation. For example, I can use autopsy tool and a lot of lot of different forensic uh, tool for for uh, uh, security investigation. And actually, uh, that is very very uh, uh, important to understand because if security issues is a found on virtual machine running with the Azure environment. Investigator need to perform following steps, these steps uh, to start forensic uh, investigation. And that is actually a scenario. I, I previously mentioned I have some virtual machine. My company uh, use uh, two resources group, uh, production environment. Uh, I can use uh, for, for, for production purpose, of course and the security group uh, used for incident response and forensic investigation. And also under the production group, I can create virtual machine. For example, that is a code. Uh, that is a code I can share with you, for example. 
and I can zoom. And this Ubuntu machine is compromised, suspe suspect to be compromised. And the first step is uh, I can stop this virtual machine for forensic investigation because I need to take snapshot from my operation system disk. But that is the next steps, how we understand. I must shut down my virtual machine, locate Ubuntu operation system disk. Uh, I can go on in my resources group here and I can find my uh, operation system disk here, for example. And the next steps, uh, the next steps is uh, actually uh, to create a snapshot, this uh, uh, this uh, operation system disk. Uh, that is that is important to understand because uh, uh, I can use some um, uh, Ubuntu. That is actually my production group. Uh, I can define, uh, uh, for example, name uh, Ubuntu. This uh, snap. Never mind. That's that is a name. Uh, full uh, made a completely read-only copy for select this. Or can use incremental option. And I can use uh, different type of storage. Local redundant storage, the standard storage uh, for storing backup in region don't support availability zone. That can be a default with the point of view encryption. I can use profit managed key or customer managed key. For the networking option, I can enable public access from all uh, networks that is by default. And uh, I can run the fun validation and I create snapshot actually for my compromise uh, compromise system that is the first stage and very important uh, important stage how we understand uh, understand this uh, this process uh, that is uh, uh, actually how we understand I can go now in my restaurants and you can see all information in overview about about uh, uh, about my snapshot uh, with the resource group uh, location, my subscription ID, state. Yes, that is unattached because we are we are in, in uh, at the, the beginning of this process. Uh, the size, for example, is thirteen gigabyte, and everything, and everything. Uh, that is actually how we understand uh, this uh, this process. Uh, in, in a practical way, and uh, it is very, very easy uh, to create snapshot for that purpose. But I I can use uh, I can use uh, also uh, for that purpose. Uh, yes, that is uh, actually I practically explain everything, and that is the process how we understand to stop. Uh, virtual machine, I can choose my operations disk system, create snapshot and everything and validation passed and go to, to resources and I can see all information about, about that. That is the, the first uh, way. The second way in virtual machine acquisition on Azure cloud platform, I can include the following steps. I can create snapshot of operation system, this on the suspect, suspect virtual machine with the uh, command line interface, and I can use PowerShell for that purpose with very, very easy command. Uh, please, uh, virtual machine show with my resources group, with my name and query storage profile, and I can define snapshot create command for that purpose. The second step is how we copy the snapshot from the storage account. I can use the share access signature for that proposal. It's very important to find the security way how to protect my storage account uh, from attacker. And I can use snapshot grant access common to gain time specific access rights to the snapshot. Uh, and uh, 
run Windows PowerShell as administrator and I can create snapshot grant access with my production group, with name, with the uh, duration in the second of, uh, uh, and access level. I can define access level. After that, uh, I can create storage account and create file share with the storage account. That is the next steps. Uh, I can see my account key. I can see the file share created. That is very important part. How I understand the process copy of snapshot to the storage account under different resources group because I can create file share with the storage account and once the key is obtained I can create the file share uh, with uh, with these uh, commands with required parameters the second is copy to snapshot of the file share I uh, must uh, know the source URI the access, share access signature generated for accessing the snapshot destination file path. I can run uh, a storage file show command with the query properties, copy status to determine whether the DD file was successfully copied in, in, in my previously created file share. And delete snapshot from the source resources group. That is very important part and create backup copy. Uh, uh, I can run snapshot delete command to remove snapshot from my previously defined production group resource group and uh, when I create backup copy from the snapshot uh, I can create share access in natural token for the storage account with required the parameters uh, I can create blob container by using share access signature token for enhancing security that is that is very very important part how we how we understand this this process and mount a snapshot for the resident substation i can use combination windows and e to uh, kick together and select pc from the left side click computer and selling map network drive when i pro prompt i provide the storage account name with user and storage key as a password double click on the mountain share to view the dd file and the final steps is actually how I can analyze this my DD file on forensic workstation with this snapshot uh, DD file. I can use, for example, autopsy. I can use different uh, forensic tool uh, like in, in case like uh, FT, FTK imager uh, and uh, contain this snapshot that is mounted on forensic workstation. And you can conduct forensic examination on the content of the operation system disk of affected virtual machine with uh, tools like this but that is very good explanation in the summary we have the all steps uh, digital forensic investigation and response workflow uh, for one to seven uh, the first when we create a snapshot and after that we can mount in the file name uh, on, from on-premise for Windows for workstation, but the company must guarantee, I, I mentioned uh, before, but chain of custody is very, very important part through the evidence acquisition, preservation, access process to ensure the valid, uh, uh, actually, chain of custody. Digital evidence uh, storage must demonstrate uh, adequate access control, data protection me mechanism, integrity monitoring and alerting, uh, lodging and auditing, uh, and etc. That is, that is uh, how we understand. The next steps is, yes, that is uh, how we understand the just-in-time virtual machine access, because attacker on the internet uh, use poor scanning, to discover that the public IP uh, listening to this management port, and then the cloud used brute force attack to some jump box, take control to virtual machine and establish foothold in, in production uh, environment. That is perhaps, for example, have access to other virtual machine in, in uh, Azure. I can define network security group I can define inbound and outbound rule. Okay, allow my IP address for 
for example, for three hours in my jump box. And that is very, very important part. And when I create some virtual machine like this, uh, uh, I, I can, for example, uh, I can start for this virtual machine and in configuration management, that is option. Enable just in time virtual machine access. But that is not finished and not possible by default. I must create role based access control with my role assignment here. And I, I definitely must have a role like contribution role for my virtual machine, for my uh, account. I must part of this, this uh, virtual machine contribution. You can see here, and that is with the point of view, my subscription and uh, user account, important part. And when I create role-based access control, I can enable here just-in-time virtual machine access for my virtual machine. And in Microsoft Defender for Cloud, I can go uh, to explore just-in-time virtual machine access for my virtual machine. And I can go for my Ubuntu and edit uh, in order to explain. And I can add some port, for example, 3389 uh, port for FDP. Uh, of TCP or, for example, of any other port and make requests, for example, for free or, for example, four hours, and I can click OK. And I have for SSH and RDP access, for example, the first time range is the three hours and the second is time range, the four hours. And that is very, very good technique. But Microsoft Defender for Cloud also must have a actually uh, settings uh, uh, for for uh, for uh, configuration and environment uh, when 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 we defined this this option because i i, I must in, in in environment settings uh, uh, actually all all uh, enable all of this uh, option for my for my virtual machine when i go in, in, for example, in, in Defender for Cloud, I can enable uh, uh, this this uh, this option here in environment settings. And regarding based on my subscription, uh, I have Defender Plan, and that is that can be enabled. You can see on my case, all of this option is enabled in Defender in Defender Plan. And that is prerequisite for our our just-in-time virtual machine access. Uh, I I like practically explain everything. And uh, okay, that is that is a slide, but uh, you will see all in in my practical demo how we understand just-in-time access virtual machine configuration for my uh, virtual machine and uh, and everything. The second part is very good uh, good. Uh, option how we understand is file integrity monitoring because file integrity monitoring examines some operation system files uh, windows registry application softwares linux system files for change that might indicate for any attack and uh, i can use other change tracking solution to track and that some change in my environment uh, when uh, file integrity monitoring is enabled you can change tracking resource on the uh, solution i can use azure mon monitoring for for that purpose but you can also disable file integrity monitoring feature in defender for cloud for example you can take a web advantage directly in defender for cloud with, with the point of view policy of entity for monitoring uh, uh, file and registry key creation for removal 
with the point of view file modification, changing file size, access control is hash, registry modification. Uh, I can add uh, something. Uh, uh, um, this is a good example for this size of file. I have some config uh, text or file, but uh, in category, I, I cannot modify something, remove. And I can uh, uh, view everything about registry modification, change in size, access control uh, list, type, contents, and everything. That is a very, very, very important part. For example, for PCI DSS monitoring, uh, uh, many companies have a lot of uh, cardholder data uh, and uh, deal with, uh, with this type of uh, tools. You, you can uh, use many different type of tools. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in that in, in that propose, uh, but uh, I shortly explain about about the term and how we deal with with point of view also monitoring option uh, in the cloud. And uh, with the point of view incident response tool. Uh, some tool, uh, many of tools is free and uh, not depend on the license. Uh, you can go to in Microsoft Fix this fine environment, for example. But I can use that is good example for advanced person tool, tooling and methodology. I can use uh, point in time deep scan with different tool, continuous monitoring, uh, sensor uh, intelligence, the base of data from Microsoft Global sensor networks. Uh, Microsoft Defender for identity detection of common threats and how we analyze this authentication request. Uh, with the point of view behavior, process level detection, I can use Microsoft Defender for endpoint option and different tools in deep scan like Arctic Fox, like uh, Live, like uh, SCA, uh, proprietary incident response tool for Windows, uh, Linux, uh, and everything. Uh, and that is uh, in additional how we understand how we run to target um, device support operation system, defender for endpoint, defender for identity, how we protect from pass, pass the hash, on silver ticket, skeleton key, and many, many more. And uh, Azure Sentinel uh, is, uh, I a lot of explained in my previous uh, uh, presentation and demo lab, but uh, I can use machine learning and arti artificial intelligence uh, user behavior analytics, limited modern operation system for all event information, forensic extractor is for deep dive information, how I provide a high level active directory for configuration assessment and uh, initial threat detection tool for Linux, uh, runs of target device support operation system and many, many more. And uh, that is a lot of, lot of example. Uh, uh, Azure Active Directory Investigator with PowerShell model, Hulk, uh, PowerShell basing tool. It's a very, very great tool for gathering information related to Office 365. Uh, Azure Active Directory Incident Response PowerShell model provides a number of tools. Developer as an Active Directory product group of, from the Microsoft Detection Response team to assist compromise response. Uh, tools for assessment powershell model is great option uh, azure active directory internals powershell model when i have tried to put all the knowledge uh, to gain some during uh, the year spent with some office risks find an azure active directory that is a result of house reverse engineering and the debugging microsoft tools related to in microsoft entra PowerShell models, directory synchronization, I don't know, admin portals and everything. Uh, CISA Sparrow with PowerShell scripts created, but Cloud Forensic team to help detect possible compromise account and application in uh, Azure Office 365 environment. Uh, uh, Cloud uh, Strike models, uh, Azure Hound uh, uh, incident response uh, for, uh, I think, for point uh, two is in the last version. Bloodhound data collector for Microsoft Azure. Uh, tool uh, query for uh, configuration, uh, 
uh, as your tenant uh, uh, with the crowd strike for fine permission and configuration settings to assist many organization in incident response uh, to securing an environment. Azure Hunter is this amazing tool also uh, to run some threat hunting playbooks on data from Azure and of Office 365 environment for the cloud forensic purpose. And many, many, many uh, other example. Um, you, you need somewhere to store your forensic data. Custom free tier is amazing. Uh, data Explorer is perfect tool. Uh, Microsoft account just to sign in, uh, no credit card, uh, no buying. Uh, look to, in sign of data, you can use PowerShell. Uh, PowerShell module will, it will help you to, to extract configuration information, useful forensic data about your tenant. Uh, you can use some ghost tool, open source by CISA. Another great tool to extract forensic data. You can analyze this some uni unify audit logs to deep dive on particular user from the indicator you can extract via PowerShell module and everything. A lot of lot of example. Uh, Office 365 extractor open source uh, tool, uh, read about forensic data. Uh, Microsoft Incident Response blog is very, very good. We cover it with a lot of great information about, about that. Auditors have some created an update version uh, regarding Microsoft Extractor Suite from Incident Response process. And finally, you have never used Azure Data Explorer. Uh, that is a repo how we uh, found a lot of information uh, you can use custom query language uh, uh, and uh, definitely for, 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 for different purposes. Recommendation, that is final step of this, this presentation. Active Directory hardening based of tier model 0, 1 or 2. Compromise recovery team can support this uh, part, but uh, with the point of view patching for both Microsoft and third party product, that is a critical Patching is always critical. Uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and roll 100 of device for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, uh, uh, regulatory review threat for vulnerability management, uh, follow recommendation steps starting with the most critical for your organization. And uh, Windows 10, he again, how we enable credential device, explore guard, Windows Hello for business, uh, how we control folder access, how we attack surface reduction, bit locker, uh, how you secure bot for that, for that purpose. Windows Firewall, when we're talking about group policy uh, that uh, with uh, reduce lateral movement attack surface and block all incoming connection on clients manage exception for the help desk and you can use different different option for that for identity i can use manage legacy protocol because that is very important to disable smb version one ntlm one uh, 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 inventory uh, discontinuity to use tls 1.0 and 1.1 uh, uh, that is very uh, I remind you about the spring 2031 or, and update all service with use SM, um, simple my transfer protocol, telnet, uh, FTP, uh, a lot of different legacy authentication in Office 365. With the point of view strong authentication, I can use password less option. Hello for business or FIDO, uh, Azure ID multi-factor authentication. Uh, I can use conditional access policy. I can use sign and, uh, and user risk for that purpose with the point of view, strong authentication for all sign-ins and everything. Uh, centralized logging, I a lot of explain with the point of view, sign-in data flows when you're talking about Sentinel. Just-in-time administration, we're talking about today about that. Credential hygiene, uh, uh, best practice, practice uh, and for access, we, I can use risk-based access uh, 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 that is required as a active director identity protection mechanism, 
because uh, when we uh, go in uh, Azure Active Directory, okay, I can use I can use uh, option. Uh, I can use option for for uh, for example security and uh, i can go on in security option and go in identity protection and i can use user risk policy for that purpose signing risk policy multi-factor authentication registration policy uh, uh, I, I must act, activate uh, P2 licenses for that, for that proposal when I go, for example, in Active Directory uh, in, in the licenses option. Here, uh, I can go in, uh, in order to check, for example, and I can go in all product. Yes, I can activate Microsoft Entra ID P2 uh, and I sign this, this uh, uh, actually uh, from my from my user. Uh, I can define users and groups for that purpose and assign licenses. Uh, actually, uh, just click here review and assign. And after that, I can use, uh, for example, when I go in uh, uh, Active Directory. As an active directory, uh, I, I can uh, I can use uh, conditional, for example, in in uh, security. Sorry, I can use conditional access policy in, in that propose and create policy for a different different propose. That is that is very po uh, important part. Uh, I can specify policy condition and control, uh, and after that enable policy and create for 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 different type of action. Uh, risk based access uh, blocks access to require high level of confidence. A remote use of VPN, monitor audit, uh, external vendors management and activity. Privileg access workstation is very important how I monitor uh, tier zero accounts and audit usage regularly uh, for Azure admins, it's very important. Activity for inventory application, I can use application locker. In audit mode to inventory application, I can analyze this in blacklist of the unauthorizing application, uh, whitelist approved application, uh, fine tune for instant response time defender for identity, uh, common uh, client interface and uh, CMD logging, uh, I can update partial to last version for additional functionality and everything. Uh, user behavior analytic in order to uh, manage response to alerts to train the systems. Uh, uh, I can use uh, Microsoft 365 Security Center. I can use Microsoft Defender for Office 365 for anti-phishing policy to help protect against user and domain appreciation. We do a lot of attack simulation training module and combination Azure Monitor Defender for Cloud Sentinel and XDR solution is, is uh, definitely a win-win situation. Benefits from the combined incident queue correlation of single ac across cloud services and configuration management for multiple platform is one place. SMB is very good example that is remote uh, file system that is required protection from attacker when the Windows computer must be tricky in contacting malicious server running inside the trust network and blocking connectivity to SMB how to prevent SMB traffic from lateral connection and entering the living network. It's very crucial part and very critical part. And uh, actually, uh, for the list of Windows and Windows Server application and services, may stop fun functionality. Uh, you can review 
service overview and network port requirements for Windows. That is very important. And uh, password protection mechanism, how we detect and block known weak password from various different environment for password spraying option. You can use uh, block conditional weak terms specific to your uh, organization, on-premise environment, uh, uh, Azure AD, uh, Active Directory, password protection, use some uh, global and custom, actually, then password list that is stored in Azure Active Directory. Does the same check for the on-premise option. These checks are performed during password change and password reset events against on-premise Active Directory domain service and domain controllers. You can use this wall for between the FSR replication, but we can lot of request uh, new password policy uh, in communication between domain controller and member server when we have actually Azure Active Directory password protection proxy service and request uh, forward for domain controller in uh, my student uh, ID. I can after that configuration my uh, password policy uh, i can use uh, active directory administrator uh, for that purpose and i mentioned previously i can use risk defined user defined location in my uh, identity protection for example for the leak and national infected devices anonymous ip addresses signing for an unfamiliar location ip address for suspicious activity i can uh, use block uh, attack, uh, change bad credential, MFR, change risky logons, and different, different option for uh, uh, with the point of view incident response. And Azure Threat Protection Microsoft blog post is amazing with a lot of, lot of great information about that and uh, continuous learning about uh, incidents uh, and everything uh, help us uh to uh, to better understand because we we, we 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 are facing with a lot of sophisticated and zero day vulnerability today and uh, how we uh, deal with the different types of security incident uh, in the cloud environment more and more sophisticated that is a trend and uh, with the point of view incident response and everything okay I think that is uh, all of my my presentation. Many many thanks for your attention, because that is a very very interesting theme. Uh, actually, I'm I'm a security architect, and uh, that is my field, and one of the uh, actually I love this this these topics uh, regarding the incident management and uh, forensic investigation. But that is uh, actually is cru cru crucial topics uh, and uh, my idea for uh, Azure Back to School to explain uh, all of this uh, during this session. Thank you very much and uh, 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 have a nice uh, day and uh, we, uh, we are continue to... to uh, I, I, I definitely will continue to share my knowledge experience uh, and share share with you. Thank you very much uh, and see you in, in the next session. Bye-bye.